Welcome in folks, it's a three piece here today. Buy one, get two free. We're talking Tesla here at the top of the video. Obviously the Tesla numbers are out. We're gonna talk about those, go in depth. I wanna give you my perspective and opinions on these Tesla numbers, okay? Then I wanna go ahead and get into this one. Uh, Dan Ives giving his uh, opinion on the stock. He's basically saying it's a buy the dip and don't you dang trip, okay? So we'll listen to what he has to say. I'll share my perspective and opinions and we'll speak about, you know, do I expect Tesla to go much lower from here? Those sorts of things, okay? And then last, I wanna get into this one, the big short, Steve Eisman. Oh yeah, baby. I personally think there should be no Fed rate cuts this year. So looking forward to watching that seven minute clip, react to that, kind of give my opinions perspectives on his opinions on where the economy is at, where stocks are going, where the market's going, all those sorts of things. Folks, I appreciate you joining me. Make sure you hit that like button for me. That's all I ask in return. Smash a like. If you enjoy the channel, make sure you're subscribed here. Also, pin comment down there. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can do that. I'll put that as a pin comment along with my X, formerly known as Twitter. Okay, I'll put that as pin comment as well. If you want to follow me on those platforms, I'm pretty active on both. Okay, all right, guys, let's get into this. I was just because the, the stock stock's is, down six percent. Stock's down. Um, uh, oh, let's go. All right, we got also, you buying any Tesla stock? Let me know in the comments. Are you going to buy any on this on this dip here? Got the numbers for us as well. You want to just do that? What do you think, Jim? I want to check with you first, Phil, please. Phil, take it away. Give us those Tesla numbers. Uh, these are not good, David. That's why the stock is down. Deliveries in the first quarter of 387,000 vehicles. Let me put that into some perspective. The fact set consensus as of Friday, and it had been coming down, was for 457,000 vehicles to be delivered. First quarter Way of last wrong. year, the company delivered 422,000. So this is a year-over-year -year decline, the first since 2020 that we've seen from Tesla. Uh, and in terms of production, the company produced... 433,000 vehicles. They do point out the fact that they had the change in the ramp up in production in Fremont as they come up with the new uh, Model 3 Highland edi edition. They also had the Red Sea issue, also the issue with uh, production at the Gigafactory in Berlin. Not said by the company, but clearly one of the main factors, guys, what's happening in China. And we know what's happening there as they have lowered their production and we've seen the announcements uh, or the reports come out of China. And that clearly has an impact here. That's why the stock is under the pressure that you're seeing right now. Again, 387,000 vehicles delivered in the first quarter. So real quick here, it's very important I say this because China, 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 okay? Here's the deal with Tesla in China. They're actually doing great in China. It's a super competitive market and you know, vehicle sales might not have been the best recently, but with that being said, if you look at Tesla's market share versus competitors, Tesla's holding up phenomenally, okay? So don't think, you know, it's like Tesla's just bad in China, everybody else is doing great. No, that's not the situation. The street would Sometimes as a company, you just got to deal with the market you got to deal with. Expecting 457, even some of the bearish analysts were expecting, what, 410, 415, not 387. Guys, I'll send it back to you. Um, Wait. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, Phil, uh, full year estimates, I guess we can say goodbye to some two handles, right? Oh, I think that's that's a given. I think that's a given. Uh, most were already bringing them under two. We had a few people saying 1.91 million deliveries for the year as, as the estimate that they were putting out there. For some perspective, and I don't know if we can pull up the chart that we have showing annual deliveries, they delivered 1.81 million vehicles last year. And if they were to go to 1.92, 1 1.93, that would be about an 8% increase in deliveries. Now the question becomes, do they hit 1.81 million? Is there a possibility that they don't even make that? Um, that possibility is out there, but it's early and a lot of things can change. Obviously, production is, is likely to come back much stronger and deliveries should improve in, in Europe. They've been clearing out a lot of inventory in the first quarter. Uh, and if things start to firm up a bit, then certainly we expect higher numbers uh, in the second, third, and fourth quarter. To what extent remains to be seen. China's the wild card in all of this, guys. They are brutally competitive in terms of what's happening with EVs and EV pricing. And that's having an impact. There's no doubt that that's having an impact on, on Tesla. And remember, Shanghai is not just where they supply China, but that's also where they supply other markets around the world. So they, they can offset some of you know the impact of 
just pure China and the competition there in terms of vehicles being shipped to other markets out of the uh, Gigafactory in Shanghai. But there's no doubt that uh, this competition in China has had an impact. Now, Phil, I know... All right, before we go further here, uh, let's talk some good, let's talk some bad. Bad, obviously, number missed. I mean, you know, my guy was under 410, who I would say is much more knowledgeable than anybody I probably know at, at calling numbers realistically. I think they were at like 406 or something like that, if I recall. And so the fact that it came under even where they were at, um, definitely worrisome, right? And it also shows Wall Street analysts, like they don't have a clue what's going on, right? The fact that these Wall Street analysts just a few days ago were at 457 on average, 457, 456, uh, company did 380, what, seven? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, they were, you know, Analysts, oh my gosh, they missed by a mile, right? The good, if you want one piece of good news in regards to this whole situation for Tesla, and this is really the only good thing you can really gather from it, okay, is now analysts are going to go extremely bearish on Tesla here in the short term. Short term meaning the next 6 to 12 months. They're going to plummet their numbers, their expectations. I mean absolutely plummet what their deliveries expectations or expectations are for this year, production, revenue, EPS, margin. I'm telling you, they're going to just absolutely dump on this stock for the next month or so, okay, and bring down their numbers massively, which leaves Tesla actually into a decent situation where potentially they could actually, you know, have some upside alpha performance there uh, throughout the year if they can come in just a little better than, than analysts are at, right, because analysts are going to go extremely bearish on Tesla now. The United States is not the fulcrum. It is, it is China, and I know the problem is Berlin, but this this kind right. of this newfound we don't want to go electric uh we want uh ice we also are willing to have hybrid in this country it has we want hybrids. It's That's a, the, the, yeah. it, americans are embracing hybrids right now but but it's not what if, if you're someone who wants us to electrify and, and not and get off of nuclear i mean get off of uh, go to nuclear and get off of coal and get and get off of that gas it's not going to come together at that level <laughs> No, but that's not how consumers think, Jim. No, I, I, I think there's very few people in this world who sit there and think, well, ultimately, is the fuel source for this a coal burning fire, uh, a power <laughs> plant? Is it nuclear? Uh, is it hydropower? That's not how consumers think. You know that. The no, way a consumer just... thinks is, you know, what, what's, the, what's the best option for me price wise? And then right. also, you know, am I comfortable making this transition? And there is no doubt that the recharging issues in this country are a huge issue. The right. first adopters, they could live with it, not the people who are now looking at buying a vehicle now. And I hear this time and again from my friends who are considering buying an electric car. Almost all of them say the same thing. If I'm in Chicago and I've got to drive to Cincinnati or St. Louis or Minneapolis, I ain't doing it in an electric nope. vehicle. We yeah. test otherwise, i got to sit yeah. there and plan You're some so ridiculous right. yeah. charging. We just uh, drove Rivian. All I could think of was like, what happens on ninety five? On on ninety five? Like, am I going to push it to a road? You know, to yeah. a rest stop? I mean, it, it's worrying. Hey, Phil. Um, uh, the company reports obviously April twenty third, so we'll get a lot more details uh, then in terms of yep. price cuts. What it meant to what actually meant to underlying cash flows? You were in Chile not that long ago. You know, you mentioned the production out of the Shanghai factory. But give us a sense in terms of your expectations in competition in other markets where the Chinese can come in with vehicles that are still priced far below what Tesla's able to do. Not only are they priced below what Tesla's able to do in electric vehicles for the, lar for the most part because of the advantages that they have in terms of scale, in terms of labor costs in China. But on top of that, David, when you go to a place like Chile, the thing that you notice is that the internal combustion engine vehicles, four, five, six thousand dollars cheaper from a Chinese automaker compared to a comparable vehicle. We compared one from Great Wall versus a Toyota. They were both midsize SUVs. No comparison at all. And when we talked with consumers, they all said the same thing. I, it's pretty good. Why wouldn't I buy it? It's five thousand dollars cheaper. It, it, and that's that's the competition that not just Tesla, but all automakers are facing. And in terms of EVs, yes, Tesla is king of the hill in the United States and was king of the hill up until the fourth quarter with BYD. Full year numbers, I think BYD probably passes them this year. Um, they're still very formidable and they've got a lot of advantages, but they are facing a period here where they've got to deal with softness in a number of key markets. 
All right, hold your flipping flapjack and horsies for just a moment. Oh, why don't you have a look at this? This came out five hours ago. BYD, this is out of Reuters, BYD hands back top EV seller title to Tesla after Q1 sales decline. BYD, China's biggest EV maker, reported first quarter 2024 sales fell 43%. Compared to the fourth quarter of 2023, handing back the title of the world's biggest EV seller to Tesla, winning it all last year. So, the moral of the story is, there's problems that are way more broad than what's going on with good old Tesla Maesla. And the fact is, they want to say this, they, the way some of this commentary sounds, the way that some of this commentary sounds makes it sound like Tesla's losing in China. Like they're way behind, like they're doing bad, like their market share is horrible. And then you look at the reality from a few hours ago in Tesla's top seller. Like, 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 you know, it's just, it's fascinating, right? So, you know, let, let's get into where we go from here. But the bottom line is the long term still looks great for Tesla. Short term, crap. But we all know that. Like, this it's not a surprise to any of us, to be quite frank. Well, it wasn't a good quarter. I want to get to Dan Ives and... Uh... Everything he's got to say, of course, longtime bull on the stock uh, from Wedbush Securities, managing director of equity research. Dan, I'm um, reading your report, which you wrote very quickly. Um, let's call it as it is. While we were anticipating a bad quarter, this was an unmitigated disaster. First quarter deliveries was a nightmare quarter for Tesla, you wrote. Elon is now pressured by the street and China demand remains very soft. And you also say, in this case, street criticism is warranted. But then I end... He's still have an outperform rating, and I wonder why. Hey, look, I mean, for the long term, like in terms of the actual opportunity for EV, for full self-driving, for autonomous, that's still there. But let's just call it like it is. This is no smoke and mirror. I mean, if you looked up train wreck in the dictionary, <laughs> you'd see a picture of Tesla's 1Q quarter. And, you know, I think the, the, the big problem is deliveries. How do you reverse the trend? And that's why I believe this is a fork in the road. In other words, Musk either turns this around, whether it's cutting prices, put the strategy in place, or Dave, I think we sit here maybe three, four quarters from now, and this is actually a seminal moment in the start of what could be some darker days ahead if they do not turn this around. All right, but how, what does the turnaround look like? You say cutting prices. Clearly, they're facing more competition from Chinese EV makers, not just in the domestic Chinese market. So what do you do if you're Tesla? I think you have to weigh out the strategy. Okay, what are price cuts going to look like? When are the new models coming? What could software be as a percent of revenue? What's the AI roadmap? Right now. So, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I completely disagree. Completely disagree with Dan Ives, okay? More price cuts? No. No, that's not what Tesla should do anymore at this point in time, okay? The price cuts haven't worked the way they were intended to work. Bottom line is, okay? So, if demand's not there, you can't force the demand, okay? The bottom line is if the demand's not there, you can't force the demand. In the market I live in, Las Vegas, okay, in the great financial crisis, real estate prices fell 50% and you still couldn't find buyers despite dropping the price 50%, okay? If the demand's not there, the demand's not there. Now, as a real estate market, you're stuck with whatever you got to work with, right? As somebody that controls your own product, you can control pricing. If you want to take margin at a particular time, you can take margin. So to just say, oh, just cut price, it'll move, it doesn't work like that. It, it'd be cool if it did, but it doesn't. Okay, if the demand's not there, the demand's not there. So for Tesla to just say, oh, let's just keep dropping price, keep dropping price, it's just, at the end of the day, it's not worth it. Tesla's insanely competitively priced in China, in Europe, and in the United States. The three main markets they got to focus on. And so the bottom line is, you know, if anything, they should be going up on price in the back half of this year. It's essentially playing darts blind. Take margin. You don't really have an adult in the room. The conference causes we've talked about here ha have really been horror shows. So investors, they're hoping in terms of that, what's on the other side of this. Now, in terms of the growth, the opportunity, 30 billion in cash, they're in a phenomenal position from that perspective. But I'd say probably this is what I'd say in the last five years, probably the, the darkest period relative to what we're seeing in China. And this quarter, explanation mark. 
I All mean, right, but you talk about, um, you know, the hope of investors. You still clearly have hope as well. So what do you base your hope on? You've been, I mean, in the last two minutes here, you've been quite negative. Hmm? It's, it's that we're 3 4% of all automobiles or EVs. Is that full, strel- full self-driving autonomous, you could argue that could be a trillion dollar worth of value from a software perspective. The China story, you've seen the price cuts start to stabilize. They had a good week of the last quarter. So there are some optimism, and I still believe you could be toward 2 million units for the year. But this quarter, there's just no way to sort of glass half full it. I mean, this is one where even whisper numbers called 415K, 386, a disaster. So is the is it supply or demand? Because we expected some production setbacks in the first quarter. Okay, know? I think supply would be dog ate the homework. Maybe call it 30K. You could explain that in a press release. But realistically, it's demand. And I think the problem here, Sarah, is that Okay, you're either going to cut prices or ultimately, like, you're going to hold serve and then focus on what you could actually do but hold margins and where volumes could go. The problem is, is that you can't just put one toe in the water. In other words, like, what's the strategy? How are you going to And do you know how? Oh, man, I I wish they could have kept going there. Uh, So to finish off thoughts around Tesla before we get more macroeconomics, stock market in general related with Mr. Big Short Steve Eisman here, okay? Um... I I did some very important things in the main channel video last night, right? I went back throughout history and, you know, throughout Tesla's, you know, past 10 plus years and uh, showed you different time periods where Tesla's revenues downtrended. And there was actually a really substantial downtrend. I think it was when they went from Q4 2018 to Q1 2019. And I believe their revenue fell something like it was in the 30 to 40 percent range on a sequential basis which was a pretty shocking uh drop at that time right and it could have been very easy to say tesla's best growth days are behind the company now at this point in time right obviously i was completely wrong and then i showed other periods in 2015 2016 other years where revenue actually declined for the company and no one remembers those quarters now unless you go back and you're uh, you know a math nerd like me and a stock nerd and you like to go back and look at historical data and numbers no one like no one else is looking at that right and those quarters are long gone no one remembers them no one remembers what the numbers were no one remembers that 30 to 40 percent drop in revenue on a on a quarter over quarter basis tesla had back in 2018 and 2019 no one remembers that now right but it was what it was and so right now we're going through one of those periods where tesla's numbers really bad in the short term, right? And really bad is relative. It's, you compare Tesla to Tesla, really bad by Tesla standards, horrible by Tesla standards, but the long-term story is still there. This quarter will be a thing of the past. Two to three years from now, no one will even remember this quarter. No one will remember this video. Like, you know, like, like that's just time moves on, things happen, and then, you know, Tesla will be doing some crazy way bigger revenue number. And I'll be bringing it up in three years from now. Guys, remember that quarter in 2024, the first quarter? And remember the second quarter? Those were really bad quarters. And everybody thought Tesla's growth was done. And look at where their numbers now. We'll be doing that in a few years, okay? Next one up here, big short Steve Eisman. Let's get into where his perspectives are. Central Bank's uh, market impact, Steve Eisman, uh, senior portfolio manager at Newberger Berman. And we've had you on enough that that I'm always a little bit hesitant to try to ask you for big picture, top-down analysis, because a lot of times you, you don't really want to want to go there. I actually have an opinion on this one. Good. Ooh. You have an opinion on this one, but I'll just start by by saying we're, we're in right. kind of an, uh, an interesting environment where we're definitely worried that the economy, for Fed reasons and for Fed cut reasons, we're worried that the economy is staying strong and that inflation is... I think it's more than staying strong. It's actually, I think it's there's been a reacceleration. But we're also worried... Right. That there's going to be a recession because the Fed is going to have to engender one. Exactly. So we're worried about the economy is too strong and there might be a recession. So, it, so everybody's it's, hoping for a little bear's porridge. Exactly. Right. Something just right. <laughs> right. Because we're worried. And, and has that ever happened? Can we really orchestrate that? Yeah, we have it right now. Everybody should just relax. <laughs> so that's, is, that, is that your view right no, now? No, my, my view is um, I feel that ever since... Greenspan was in charge of the Fed. The Fed has always been extremely insensitive to its own impact on markets. And, you know, when Powell said, was it last, I think it was last week, it feels like an eternity ago, that financial conditions are tight, I was like, what planet are you on? 
So, I mean, my view is the economy is fine. There should be, I personally think there should be no Fed cuts this year. And, you know, the market will do whatever the market does, but the economy is fine. And why would you cut, you know, my, my actual fear is that if the Fed were actually to cut rates, the market goes into, so it becomes, I guess, bubblicious. And then, and then we have a real problem. So, it, you know, things are good. The, the Fed should do nothing and, 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 and wait for data to get weak. Because the, we, there's no weak data. We, we, st we still argue about, do you look at rates in absolute terms or do you look at them as... You know, that, because that, in absolute, that, that debate bores me But, it, but in absolute terms, really does. they're not... In absolute terms, they're, <laughs> in they absolute don't seem terms, high, they're not But they're high. up 500 basis points. So what, and and well, has anything it? bad happened? Nothing bad No, has that's happened. what I mean. So, I, so I remember 7 and 8% and businesses did just right. fine. So the, the economy is good. I actually think, it, like I said, it's, it's, it's re-accelerated somewhat. Why would you... On what basis would you cut Some rates? people think that the, the shock of 500 basis points is dislocated. Yeah, well, they've been talking SVB about that shock for the last two years and the economy stays fine. So you know, why, what, what's causing the Fed to talk about six rate cuts six months ago? My personal opinion is I think Powell is a, as deep down as just a dove. <laughs> He's always been a dove. He, you know, raising rates was out of character Can't for him. Dispute he had to that. do it. And he, he wants to cut rates. But I, I, at this point, you know, not that anybody ever calls me, but, you know, I would just do nothing. You, you know, why would you do something when the economy is fine? You don't think we need to raise no, I don't. Well, actually, my fear is that if they cut, that we'd have that, to. That, that eventually we will actually have to raise. That would be the worst possible thing that could possibly happen. So, you, you know, one of the things I've learned as a portfolio manager is one of the maybe the hardest thing to do as a PM is to do nothing, because it, it's so easy to actually do something. And it's the same thing with the Fed. It's so easy to do something. They could cut whenever they want to cut. The hardest thing to do is just to sit back and say, okay, everything's fine. Let's just sit and wait. And if things get a little weak, then we can Ooh. cut. You, you don't think oh, so. man. This reminds me of a – I put this really in-depth video together yesterday for the private group members. If it was a private stock group members watching this right now, you're going to know this video. But I put this video together yesterday for my private group. And um, went very into detail on over-trading in the market, making too many moves. And you heard what Steve Eisman said just there, right? A very veteran uh, individual in the market he says, the hardest thing to do is to just not do anything. Now, what's very important about that, some gems here for you, is in regards to yourself, you watching this video right now, the hardest thing to do many times is not do anything. But many times it's the best thing you can do. Don't feel like you got to sell this stock and position over here into this one. I'm going to sell this stock and I'm going to position over there. Like if it's a really thought through decision that you thought about for weeks or a month or whatever, okay, fair play, right? But if it's some rash decision, like you feel like you just need to do something, likely it's your brain tricking you. you it's, a lot of times it's best to not, just don't, you don't have to do anything, okay? I've been considering selling Texas Roadhouse stock for like over a month now, I think at this point in time, right? And maybe I do that at some point in time, but it's like a long consideration process. But many times the best thing you can do is don't do anything, okay? And, and it's, it's difficult. People don't understand how difficult it is until you get in it, right? And then, you know, you'll, you feel like you got to be productive. You feel like you got to make a move out there. And many times it just doesn't make sense. The bubblicious. We're not, are we pre-bubblicious yet? I mean, we're getting it. I, I mean, look, the, the market, is, but, but the fundamentals are really good. You know, one thing I always think about is... You know, 1999, 2000, when the market definitely was in a bubble. But what, what killed the bubble was not that it was a bubble. What killed the bubble was that the Fed raised rates a lot and put the economy into recession. Yeah. It was the recession that killed the bubble, not the small recession. So what do you think is bubble. driving this economy, though? Is it new productivity gains that somehow AI is coming? That's I, I mean, really I think exciting? the two, the two big things that are happening right now. What's the, no, I don't think it's the liquidity per se. I think what's, what it, it's real fundamental is that there's real AI, there's real investing, and there's tremendous amount of money being spent on infrastructure. And there's still a shortage of jobs, so the consumer is fine. It's, it's a nice, you know... It is, it is uh, you know, little bear's porridge in a way. So why would you spoil it by raising rates, well, by Steve, lowering rates? But just going back to, like, 2000, like, the, the idea of a bubblicious situation at that point, you said it was the Fed raising rates that made it. I mean, the Fed raised rates and then made business models where you were making no profits. Right, but, today, but, but today, the, the, the companies that people talk about are real companies that have real revenue, 
have real earnings. I mean, look, uh, and, uh, look, NVIDIA's agreed, earnings are tripled. That, that right. It wasn't necessarily the Fed just raising rates. The Fed raised rates. And I'm not feeling Becky's uh, sweater situation here. Like, that's something you could rock in maybe like December, but I feel like only December. No, but then the economy the actually went into recession and the speculation went out of the market. Can I ask a question that may, may seem political? We're in a, sure. We are in an election year. Yes. And depending on the political channel you watch, uh, you might be told that the economy is terrible and that uh, <laughs> folks are spending, you know, inflation is run away, right. costs of everything are up, everything is, you know, the, 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 the sky is falling. Right. And then I'm hearing you, as someone who's in the markets, say the economy is great and that this is actually like a Goldilocks Please moment. don't say that word Goldilocks. Very, okay. I'm very sensitive. Little, whatever you, you want to call it. A little bit. Larry Kudlow used okay. to talk about that. He used to drive me nuts. What, whatever you think this sort of moment is, and I'm, I'm hoping that you can um, square the circle, if you will, of, of, of how these two ideas could exist. And, unless you just believe the one. say the Biden economy is great and it's not getting credit is really where we head with it many get, guests. But it's fair. It doesn't, get, it doesn't okay. get credit. I mean, look, the unemployment is really low. Wages are still going up. Wages are just finally going up. Right, where really? few years. They're, they're below, people's spendable income is still below where it was when he took office. That's Average fair, but, but the, but it, well, it's the not trend, fair, it's but, just, but, but the trend is, true. the trend is, but the trend is up. It has been. And, right. you know, people still have savings. Um, you know, the only thing negative you could say is that there's been inflation, so some things are harder to buy and <laughs> harder to buy. But, yeah, a little bit, 30%. But, but Okay, <laughs> that's fair, but inflation is starting to come down, or yeah, at least it's not coming flattened down. The, the rate of increase is coming down. Right. Okay, but you know, so wages are still going up. We're All I can tell you is that you're calling for deflation, which would be worse. I don't, I'm not right. calling for. It. No, I'm, I'm saying, but if you, I'm fairly certain. If I had a guess, I, I, I believe Joe here is a Republican, and I believe the other guy is a Democrat. I, I, I mean, I don't know for sure. I just watch the show enough that, like, I can usually figure out, like, who's on what side, and I believe that's the situation. Nobody wants that, but, but, but the, price, the, the price increases are there, are in, and for, for everything. That's fair, but the only thing I would just say is that there's no sign that the economy Becky's is Becky's hard to tell. Right. I, I, Becky could go either is, way. Is I don't know. If you're so, living Becky. on, you know, if you're not lucky and you're not like us, you go to the grocery Becky store might be independent for all three years ago. Okay, Maybe. But still, things are, a are still pretty good oh, over for us. Things are pretty good <laughs> for most. Oh, man. Interesting uh, chat and debate there. Okay. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I appreciate you joining me. Pin comment down there will be if you want to follow me on IG, Instagram. And then uh, the other pin comment will be if you want to follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter. Okay. Much love, guys. Appreciate you joining me and have a great day.